What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Solo Leveling Arise video. Hope everyone's been having a great night. We have part two of the summer event going on, so I got a little bit to cover, but before we get into the actual event itself, I do want to talk about the limited time banner and if it's worth pulling for, especially with our boy Wu now being an up-to-date breaker that's actually really, really damn good. Now, I'm gonna break this down for you guys two folds. I'm gonna do it from the whale perspective, I'm gonna do it from the free-to-play perspective. Free-to-play perspective, not worth pulling. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way now, right? There's no point. There's no point in going through all that. Uh, we're going to just say, no, not worth pulling. Let's not talk about it. So I'm going to take the chat away from, from the live stream. Uh, the reason why, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you guys, is because free-to-play should be focusing on saving. Like right now, Gogun, he's coming out very soon. We know this. Uh, you guys should be, hey, look at that. I got 7 or 50. God damn, look at that. Rank 10. I'm getting up there for the free-to-play. Um, you should be saving. That's pretty much what it's coming down to. And the only reason why I would say no to this, obviously outside of the fact that if you don't have Mirai, you should be pulling for Mirai anyways, because she is the better unit and she is DPS is king in this game, right? Even though Jin Chul has been updated and gone up like vastly in terms of uh, his like viability and I guess usability, there's a certain amount of time and a certain amount of resources free to play can get. And using it for him is not the way to go. As much as I love the character, and as much as I've cosplayed him, and I wish I could cosplay him right now for you guys, but I can't. Obviously, it's late at night. Uh, I think there's a certain, certain time and place for these kind of things. So, uh, Wu Jin Chul, let's talk about him for whales. This is going to be important, obviously, because whales are a whole different breed. Now, I'm going to start saying this again like I have been saying it. This whole pool here is becoming very diluted. It's becoming very much harder to pull what you want to get because there's more characters now that you have to compete with, more weapons, etc. So getting what you want here is becoming more difficult. So for whales, the limited option is a much better choice now because you're only competing against one 50-50 versus competing against a 50-50 and then also competing against three other options that you're trying to go for if you're trying to get for the fourth, obviously, right? So it's a lot more difficult to do that. Now, here's where Wu kind of shines now. He's become the best, one of the best breakers in the game, and honestly, quite a, quite honestly, one of the best support units in the game as well, too, with everything that he offers you. Um, and not to mention, he actually does pretty decent DPS, and his actual break ability is very, very strong. So let's go over Jin Chul real quick and see where you want to stop. Now, I have an A0 Jin Chul, so I'm going to continue like pushing him as much as I possibly can to get him further. But first thing I will say is get his weapon up. Okay, free to play, pay to win, doesn't matter. Get his weapon. A lot of you guys melt the weapon. A lot of you guys have been asking, should I get the weapon back? I, absolutely. If you plan to use him, get it back. You have to remember the user ignores 2% of the target's defense, which is important because you'll do more DPS that way. Very small amount, obviously, but if you push this to uh, the higher limits, obviously, this will make a bigger, bigger difference, right? Because if you look here, uh, this is 2.5, a 1, 3, 3.54 and then six so six percent of ignoring someone's defense is not too shabby and not to mention the mediation of power skill is used increase the damage dealt to the target by 20 percent for five seconds stacking up to three times so that's a pretty big deal for you guys to be able to do more damage and then also when the enemy is in the break state he increases all of the wind damage done by 12 percent excluding himself obviously and this is infinite right the duration is infinite for that so that's the beauty of this one so you you absolutely want to get his weapon if you're if you're pay to win you want to push this to a5 obviously or maybe a10 even for free to play players a1 is good enough for now just to get that extra bonus wind damage but if you plan to use him quite often, you might want to push his weapon a little further. He, again, he went from the biggest meme character to actually being one of the more viable characters. And I hope that all future buffs like that come out with other characters that make them even more viable as well. To a couple couple characters that come to mind, like Dong Su and stuff, definitely need a little bit of love, okay? So keep that in mind when you are doing this. It is going to be important that you need his weapon to make him extremely powerful. Without his weapon, he doesn't hold as much of a candle to his true potential so make sure his weapon is in your arsenal all right all right now let's go to advancements now this is where it gets important right so a1 mediation of power skill effect change increases break effect and damage by 100 percent can be stacked up to three times or sorry can be used up to three times versus used up to twice so this here is very very strong fastest way to break opponents is using that skill itself the mediation skill is right over here right so you guys can see here it is a weak break but it lets you do it three times but not only that it gives you super armor this can be used twice it'll change to three times when the first hit lands it decreases the cooldown of iron fist which is this one here which is his medium break and it gives him an extra dash so you can reduce that cooldown as well too so you want to use this usually and then start pumping out these ones here to reduce the cooldown of that when the user uses the skill it also grants a shield equal to two percent of his uh two percent of his uh Jin Chul's defense to the team for 20 seconds stacking up to three times so pretty damn good shield especially if you've done a good job stacking defense on his art artifacts 
is very powerful. So his A1 actually makes a lot of sense. So you, you definitely want to get his A1 uh, for free to play or pay to win if you have the option. A2, you see here the user's defense penetration increased by 10%. A little bit of a defense, uh, like a damage increase. It's not that huge. He's not... You see, you know, <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. Uh, her, she's pure DPS, right? With a little bit of support, but she really thrives off defense penetration. A defense unit, a breaker, not quite as much, but I mean, it will definitely help you guys get some more damage out there. Um, A3, this is where it gets really, really good. When the user uses dash, extreme evasion, or judgment, it decreases the cooldown of mediation of power and iron fist for two seconds and activates the core attack. When the user uses judgment, it activates the user's basic passive and enhances the effect. The user damage increases effect to 35% and increases duration to seven seconds versus I believe it was six seconds. So A3 really is the sweet spot for all players for him because this does so much. Not only are you activating the core attack, you're also activating all of your skills and really, uh, sorry, not activating, but decreasing the cooldown for all of them. And then you're also increasing your passive which is increasing your uh, damage effect by 35 percent so very very strong a3 is probably the spot most free to play want to stop if they plan to go for him but um you know there's a lot of jinchu lovers out there that's right <laughs> i said that never thought i hear myself saying that ever playing this game but there are some out there but this is the spot you definitely want to go for him and good enough for free to play pay to win obviously you want to keep going here uh a4 will increase his win damage by 16%, which is really strong. And then of course, A5 here, when the user uses their basic attack four times, it activates their three tier three passive, which is this, what we just saw right here, right? All of this stuff. Uh, and then when the user uses mediation of power, it increases their defense by 5%, stacking up to 12 times, which is insane -o, by the way. Crazy, crazy, crazy strong. So A5 is extremely powerful. Of course, whales will push to that if you need to. So is he worth it? Now, here's what I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's it's a, it's a it's a smart precursor, right, to Gogan He because obviously he is his pupil. Makes sense. We know Gogan He is not win though, so you're not going to be using Jin Chul very often with Gogan He unless, like I said, Methus is going to be wind and and light. In that case, you may actually end up using both of them. But Jin Chul, because of his weapon, really thrives on a wind specific team because of this extra little bonus here in the break state, right? If break doesn't matter, if there is no break state required, then I mean he'll thrive on any team. But he, realistically, he's built to be on a wind team and support that wind team very much. But again, he is a little, he's becoming more and more universal as you start using him. Would you use him if there's no break state though? Probably not. Right? You probably wouldn't use him if there's no break state. So you gotta keep that in mind as well, too. So unfortunately, he's very niche for a wind team. And until Wynn becomes more viable, and Mirei has already given them that viability from a DPS perspective, but they need just one more missing piece. And I think Hansi, uh, Hans, Hansi Mei, Hansi Mi, Hansi Mi, might be the piece that they're looking for. And if she is the case, then Wynn team is going to be formidable, right? Much stronger than Fire, I'd say much stronger than light and wind i'm oh, sorry light and dark uh not as strong as uh, water water will still be the dominant team i think the only way light's gonna improve of course is when gogan he comes out and we know that he is extremely powerful we'll have to see we can see what that does but right now for pay to win players uh if you're a small spender a three if you're a big spender, a 10, obviously. If you're a medium spender, a 5. If you are somebody who wants to use him, you want to definitely get his weapon to a 5 as well, too, as fast as you can in order to benefit from all of these benefits or all of these, um, sorry, buffs that he provides, benefits and benefits. Um, so make sure that you guys are pushing him. Free-to-play players, do not summon. Do not summon. I know, I think that that goes without saying. I don't think I really have to, you know, broadcast that. Most of you understand how this works by now, but I would not be... Um, I would not be doing that unless I am desperate in need of a really, really strong windbreaker. But we all got him for free in the seven days. So you don't have to. Sorry, I went back in there. You don't have to worry about that. So just keep him at A0 if you if you have him at A0 as free to play. But for pay to win players, like I mentioned, A3 for Dolphins, A5 to A10 for Whales, depending how much you plan to spend. Uh, and he will definitely benefit your team quite a bit. And again, I'm pretty confident, again, just with the way they structured uh, Vulcan, that Methus will be weak to wind first and then light afterwards as the double um as the double element for the higher floors for the uh the demon castle before we get to baron in september all right guys this is pain thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one take care